the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ has revealed in Zechariah 9 the war that's happening between Israel and Hamas and the nations also. What is happening, the condition, and uh, what God says regarding the war. Here in Zechariah 9, it says, The word of the Lord is against the land of Hadrach and will rest upon Damascus. For the Lord, for to the Lord belong the cities of Aram, even as all the tribes of Israel. And so this speaks regarding after, uh, it, it's during the times of Aram. Aram must have done something regarding uh, the, the goodness of God. Um, and they did, um, the, the altar of Damascus is spread into Gaza. Okay, we have to understand that as well. Uh, because they are Shia uh, Muslims, right? And they've influenced uh, the territory, uh, the city of Gaza, the territory of Gaza. And what happened was in the days of Dagon, also for example, when uh, the Philistines, uh, Philistia, they seized the Ark of the Covenant, and they put the Ark of the Covenant next to Dagon, their god, and uh, Dagon tipped over uh, once or twice, three times possibly, and uh, when Dagon fell before the Ark, uh, broke off its two arms, two hands from the wrists, its hands were broken. Uh, I think the head might have been broken as well. I'm not sure. I have to go back. And so basically what happens is that God was showing them that the hands of Dagon are, are weak. And what happened after that is they took the ark, they put it back on a, they put it on a, on a, on a chariot and sent it back into Israel. And so that was something that uh, God would look upon as a positive thing. And so it was that type of a thing where he's talking about uh, the Lord... For to the Lord belong the cities of Aram. They had fear of what happened, the fear of God, even as all the tribes of Israel. And so this is speaking of the restoration of all things after the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hamath, Hamath also, which borders thereon, uh, Tyre and Zidon, uh, though they are very wise. So God is going to restore all the goodness, all the... Uh, the, because the people are deceived, and there are mixtures regarding all of this. Okay, so Hamas is is the from the greatest to the least because the, the Hamas has handmaids, men servants. Uh, they are uh, protecting Hamas. They are for Hamas. Uh, they're against Israel. They received the spirit, the fragmentation, uh, since birth, and but they're all in different, various degrees. And so after the second coming of God. When uh, Jesus returns, he speaks his word, he, he puts fire to the entire earth, it turns into hell, and uh, he, um, as it says in Peter, that the firmness will melt, and then he carries over into the next age, there's hell, uh, in all different various degrees, as uh, it's mentioned throughout the Bible, and then the judgment, and then the carryover into the second millennial age for complete restoration, Revelation 21, Isaiah 24, many, 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 many verses in the scriptures regarding this, uh, including here in Zechariah 9. Now, uh, in verse 3 says, Tyre has built herself a rampart. Okay, so it, it is a, Tyre, <coughs> excuse me, represents a militarized fortress within all nations. Has built a, herself a rampart and heaped up silver like dust. So here's Hamas, uh, the government of Hamas goes into Gaza and uh, seizes the people, you know, the Ayatollah seizes the people in Iran, uh, and they heap up silver like dust, and gold like the mud of the streets. And so these are the, the, the real leaders, the ones that really give them uh, homage, the, the ones that are part of the organization, and, they're, um, and they advertise for the association. Uh, they're ambassadors uh, for Hamas, and all the other um, people that have uh, wicked minds of of Lucifer, Satan, and devil, sons of Satan, that have been, uh, that have occupied, that are occupying the people, which is also referred to as the prisoners of hope. In verse 4, But lo, the Lord will strip her of her possessions, and hurl her wealth into the sea, and she shall be devoured by fire. And so, hurling her wealth into the sea is those rockets that are flying into Israel. Also, the rhetoric 
uh, all of the nonsense that they speak, the nonsensical wisdom that doesn't make sense, because of their great uh, depravity, the, the wokeness of death. And Tyre and Sidon, though they be are very wise, um, which borders thereon, though they are very wise, which means that there's mixtures, and once again they're wise, but uh, they're not they're not wise in the Lord. Tyre has built herself a rampart, which is a fortified city, and heaped up silver like dust and gold like the dirt, uh, dirt of the streets. But lo, the Lord will strip her of her possessions and hurl her wealth into the sea, and she shall be devoured by fire. And so that's war. This is end time war. Uh, there, there being, uh, there's uh, destruction. Uh, all the rocket explosions, there's physical and spiritual fire, and the greatest fire will be at the second coming of Messiah. Ascalon shall see it and be afraid, Gaza too, and shall writhe in anguish. And this is what we're experiencing right now in Gaza. And Ekron also because its hopes are confounded. And the hopes of Ekron here is to overthrow Israel, uh, to commit genocide against Israel, and also Christianity as well. The king shall perish from Gaza, Ascalon shall be uninhabited, which is also spiritual poverty. So they don't have a physical or spiritual ruler that is going to uphold them before Almighty God to bring them more into a civilized state, such as like Aram. A mongrel people shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will make an end of the pride of Philistia. I was reading out of my book, out of uh, the Bible here. So here's what I was reading. Um, so Ekron, also because hopes are confounded, the king shall perish from Gaza. Gaza too will see to be afraid and shall writhe in anguish. Ekron also because its hopes are confounded. She shall be devoured by fire. Her wealth is tossed. She's, uh, she's, her, and her hurl her wealth in the sea. So God will vomit them out of his mouth. And she shall be devoured by fire, earthly and spiritual and heavenly fire. Ascalon shall see it and be afraid, Gaza too, and shall rise in anguish. Ekron also, because its hopes are confounded. The king shall perish from Gaza. Ascalon shall be uninhabited. A mongrel people shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will make an end of the pride of Philistia. I will take away its blood from its mouth and its abominations from between its teeth. So this speaks regarding the blood from its mouth. Okay, this is soul also. And so there's a separation here. I will take away its blood from its mouth. There's also a spiritual and physical uh, meaning there. And its abominations from between its teeth, which is famine. It too shall be a remnant for our God. It shall be like a clan of Judah. So this is speaking regarding after hellfire. It's regarding the, the regeneration in the covenant of peace in the second millennial age. This is not speaking, it's speaking also now. Um, I noticed that there was a person where, waving a white flag. Uh, and uh, as they were clearing out from the south. And that's the person. God showed me that's the person that God is speaking of. That's a child of God. That is wisdom. So once again in verse 6, God says that he will take make an end to the pride of Philistia. In verse 7, God will take away its blood from its mouth is genocide against Israel. When they say from sea to sea, they're speaking regarding genocide. And in verse 7, I will take away its blood from its mouth and its abominations from between its teeth, which is famine, once again. It too shall be a remnant for our God. It shall be like a clan of Judah. And 
here is regarding renouncing Hamas. And once again, lady with the white flag. It too shall be a remnant for our God. It shall be like a clan of Judah. And Ekron shall be like Jeb the, the Jebusites. Okay? Which gave their land over to King David. And they, the Jebusite, he was going to give his land free of charge. But King David said, no, I'm going to purchase it. Because it needed to be a witness with a deed. And um, But that's the context here. The Jebusite was ready to give the land freely. In verse 8, Then I will encamp at my house as a guard. That is the second millennial age. It could be and also the first millennial age. He's already doing that now because he's already glorified. And so this speaks of several different ages. So that none shall march to and fro. Okay. So now what he did, he kicked Satan out of heaven. And so that, that's accomplished there. And also, he's speaking regarding now, in this age also, where that none shall march to and fro, which is the army, Joel's army, uh, the kings that are going across the uh, dry sod, the, uh, physically and spiritually, of, of the river Euphrates, the stage at Armageddon, which, is the trans, which is, has to do with all the wars of Armageddon, which is in that area where they're going to be staging, where they're, they're staging right now in that area, the whole entire Middle East, uh, and uh, also in their own territory. Is just a uh, once again an allegory, uh, and uh, the tunnel warfare also. That none shall march to and fro; no oppressor shall again overrun them. For now I have seen with my own eyes. Here in verse nine. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! So Zion is the heavenly city where the citizens dwell. And uh, here on earth, we, we, we also experience that here on earth. And O daughter of Jerusalem is, also, is, is the glorification. And this is the true Zion, not the fake Zion of the Kabbalah. This is the true Zion, the Zion that is of, of God. The city is called Zion. You find that in Psalms also. And lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, and says here, on a colt, the foal of an ass. And this is found in uh, Matthew 21, 4 to 5. So this is one of the, some of the prophecies, just a quick verse that I put here. And the war horse from Jerusalem. So this is... And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. That's the covenant of peace. In verse 10. And from the river to the ends of the earth. So his dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. So this speaks of genocide that God is going to do in wiping out the war, wiping out everything that's going on. Uh, on here, so I have bent Judah as my bow, and this is Ju Jesus Christ is of the tribe of Judah, also, and so we see what's happening now. Judah and Ephraim, which is North America, is involved here, uh, obviously in this war, uh, in world war. For I have bent Judah as my bow, and I've made Ephraim its arrow. And see how. North America is plucking off those drones. I will brandish your sons, O Zion, over your sons, O Grecia. Now, in the King James, let's see, reach for here, in verse uh, 9, in chapter 9, verse 13, says, When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Grecia, so this is speaking regarding Judah and Christianity. And made thee as the sword of a mighty man. So what has God, what God is doing is that he's bringing division between the two. To divide and conquer. That's also found, that's found in Luke 12, 51, where Jesus said, Think not that I have come to abolish, the, uh, to bring peace, but rather to bring division. Through division, God is, 
is, is dividing and conquering the entire creation. It's all based on in the condition of the heart. And I was reading in here, in verse 10. And he shall command peace to the nations, which is the covenant of peace, in the second millennial age, after the age, millennial age of hellfire. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Fifth generation, second millennial age, same thing. And I have written here Ezekiel 47.9. I will set your captives free from the waterless. In 11, it says, As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your captives free from the waterless pit. So these are them that are not chosen as first fruits. The waterless pit is hell. There is no, I mean, it's the worst. There is no Holy Spirit there. In the souls, this is the worst places in hell. I mean, these are these are pretty bad places here. There's no Holy Spirit there, the waterless pit. But it was. it's also an allegory uh, of Luke 16, where Lazarus, or the master of Lazarus, said uh, he was actually having communion with Abraham, and in that chasm, in the place of hell, on the other side of the chasm, rather, in, in hell, and he says, look, I, I need some water to get me, I, I'm I'm dying of thirst in this place. And so, it's also referring to that as well. It's a waterless pit. It's a physical and spiritual application. He didn't know what was happening while he was there. He basically was there with what he had. Um, and God is squeezing all the goodness out of the creation through free will. And everybody has to pay back their sins and their debts uh, to God make atonement. And then the judgment, the final judgment to the fourth dimension through their free will. So, what God has shown me is you tell the people that once their rebellion against God fails and you're faced with a choice between life or death, knowing that if you were to choose God, that you would have life, would you choose God? Would you choose a different God? Would you choose Jesus if you knew that that was the right decision to make in order to free yourself from death? And you can think about that. Here in 11, As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your captives free from the waterless pit. So these captives are also living here on earth right now. The, the Gazans, for example, they are, they are prisoners. They're captive and hostages to Hamas because many who have the heart, who are more moderate and don't want the war, well, if, if they, they could get in a lot of problems, because uh, Hamas is ruling with terror, and that's how all the kings of the earth are ruling with terror, all of them. And so they can't say anything because they're afraid of being excommunicated from the mosque. Uh, they're saying they're finding weapons in all the mosques. And so they're prisoners, and God calls these people prisoners of hope. I will set your captives free from the waterless pit, and in verse 12 it says, Return to your stronghold, that is, the love of God, the real true love of God. O prisoners of hope, release. You know, they, they, and once again, the example of the Ark of the Covenant throwing down Dagon. And uh, so, return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. And that's what the Holy Spirit had me preaching to them. Drop your weapons of war. Seek peace, stop throwing rockets, and uh, seek true pre peace yourselves. Do it yourselves. Stop it yourselves. That's how you're going to free yourselves. And you, the world will have, you will have the favor of the world, and the war will have to stop. Pick up a white flag and show some character. Someone has to take the two steps forward to make it happen. And that's the only way that the creation will be free, is to stop fighting, to put your weapons down. And this is what God says. Now in verse 13, it says, For I have bent Judah as my bow, I have made Ephraim its arrow, 
I will brandish your sons, O Zion, over your sons, O Greece. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, once again, that was, I read that in, uh, yeah, the divide and conquer. Um, so I will brandish your sons, O Zion. I will raise your sons, O Zion, over your sons, O Greece, against your sons, O Greece. That, that is um, uh, the Holy Spirit within, which is the, the, uh, the division, whether or not it's on how and what and how people believe according to the, the time of dispensation and the standing covenant, which is the covenant now, not of Moses. The covenant of salvation is through the Holy Spirit of Christ. He is the new leader of the new covenant. So nobody is going to get into heaven without um, worshiping God through the body of Christ, which is the flesh and soul of Jesus Christ. And that's what God is preparing. That's what God is doing. That's what God is working towards. Through free will of the people. So, um, they're now together because of the kindred spirit between them. Some of them in Israel, yes, they're persecuting. I had them tell me, well, they're persecuting you. The Jews are persecuting you. Yes, but it's not all of them. Not all of them, you see. So, once again, as that video spoke of, that uh, the Holy Spirit showed me regarding also Beersheba, and where uh, Abraham and Jacob and Isaac, the, the patriarchs, where they walked, and the way they walked, uh, and God says in Amos, don't go to Beersheba. Because Bethel will come to naught, Beersheba will, will not prosper you. Because he's speaking about them going in their own self-righteousness. That is what destroyed them. And that's why we're no longer in that covenant. We're in a different covenant. Not through the righteousness of our own selves. As Paul writes in Philippians 3.9, I'm not having a righteousness of my own, which is of the law, but rather a righteousness that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. That's the covenant. And that there, and the old covenant is wax is, is once again closed. There is no salvation there. God says in Romans He's using it for menial purposes only, but He's also using it, and He's also uh, using it to show to give uh, Greece yes, a little bit of courage. You know, uh, seeing the front and seeing this victory is happening, but also looking at the other side of what is happening, the wokeness. Uh, of, of what happened with those three hostages when they shot their own people. And, and so also showing us that there is something going on there, also on Israel's side, that is not right. They're, they're making some errors. Things are happening. And um, so God is judging them, each individual, accordingly. That's the reality. We have to look at both sides to be healed, completely well-balanced, and have the favor of God to know what's happening between the nations, all nations, and the covenant children as well. The covenant nations as well. Very important. And once again, that's found in my book. So, I have to mention that. In verse 14, So, God will wield you like a warrior's sword, here in verse 13, which, once again, um, is... The, the, the strengthening of the people through the division to do exploits. You know, in Daniel 11 says, those who know their God will do exploits with Christ, the Holy Spirit. That is speaking of this covenant more than the first. But there were exploits done there as well with Nicodemus and uh, Joseph of Arimathea you know, the women, uh, the disciples, they were doing exploits as well in those times. Uh, they had an order, a great order of God more than anyone else because Christ was there with them. And they said yes. Then the Lord will appear over them and his arrow go forth like lightning. This is the second coming. The Lord God will sound the trumpet. And march forth in the whirlwinds of the south. 
So he will march forth in the whirlwinds of the south. South is earth. And um, the whirlwind of the south is all this commotion that's going on. It is the, uh, where, the, the, where the third and fourth dimension, they meet together. The iron and the clay. Lucifer, Satan, the devil in the spirit, in the fourth dimensional realm, and Lucifer, Satan, the devil in the physical realm. It's the whirlwind of the south, because everything has converged on earth. Satan, the devil is cast down. Everything, all the transgressions are on the earth. The universe is no longer because God is going through. The heavens bow down. The planets bow down. The stars bow down to the king, the creator. As he leaves his throne room, the heavens, the universe is purged, which is the soul. And he comes down to the third world, which is of the flesh, which is the earth. And the Lord of hosts will protect them. And verse 15, they shall devour and tread down the slingers, which is, you noticed how those young kids, they're being groomed by slinging stones over the border. And you saw how one, some of them, they, they were actually intentionally shooting their, launching their rocks at the military after uh, the, uh, what happened on October 7th, uh, after the, uh, the terrorist attack. And they got shot. Those are, the, those are the slingers. Shall devour and tread down the slingers. Now these slingers were their tanks in those days. They would make, put big rocks and then launch them into the city. And they shall drink their blood like wine. So that's, um, this blood is the soul, and the wine is the, is the, is the, uh, the spirit. And it says, and be full like a bowl, which is death. Okay? So, and... So the Lord of hosts will protect them, and they shall devour and tread down the slingers. And they shall drink their blood like wine. And so there's, there's really two different dimensions here, uh, speaking regarding uh, who, who, who is they that are drinking their blood like wine. And um, basically there's, there's, uh, there's going to be... Um, uh, the whole Lord of hosts will protect them... To protect his people, and they shall devour and tread down the slingers. And they shall drink their blood like wine. So the slingers shall drink their blood like wine. It says here, and be full like a bowl, which is also Revelation 16, is the bowls which are filled with the judgment. They'll be filled with judgment, with death. Uh, drenched like the corners of the altar. The corner of the altar are soaked in blood. Uh, when I was reading very, quite a few years ago, and I was reading regarding the, the slaughter altar, well, the Holy Spirit showed me the word soaked in sin, slaughter altar of Almighty God. You see? And um, that's how God would receive his the response from humanity in the, that covenant age. It was soaked in sin. And that had to do with the entire the condition of the whole world. And, and so this, this is what God is speaking of, drenched like the corners of the altar. And, and this is both nations. Really speaking of both nations. Uh, but the thing with Israel is that Israel is worshiping the true God. And, and so, like it, once again, God is using Israel for many purposes. So, once again, if you were to take the balances and put Hamas and Israel on the balance regarding who is a great ter greater terrorist, well, Hamas would easily tip the balance all the way down. Um, they are continual. They don't sleep until they can find a way to destroy Israel. Now, that's not the way it is with Israel. So, um, Israel has the favor of God. Hamas is the children of the sons of Lucifer without the favor of God. The great ones, the most extreme ones, are in a lot of trouble. It is um, that what God says, Amalek, where 
God says that he will always have continual war with Amalek from generation to generation and never cease to happen. It's the sons of Lucifer. And Hamas and all those other terror groups are, though, are them. They're the ones. And one here says, in, in, uh, in, uh, also in uh, Zechariah and in uh, Nahum, that one will rise out of the altar of Nineveh, which is which in, in Iraq. That is the son of Satan. But it can rise out of any nation. It's the altar of Nineveh, but it can rise up from any nation. And it's all already risen up in the hearts of humanity, just not in the fullness. But that is right around the corner. In verse 16, on that day, the Lord their God will save them. Jerusalem, the crown jewel. For they are the flock of his people. For like the jewels of a crown, they shall shine on his hand, on his land, rather. And uh, the land belongs to Jesus. And of course, that is the, the glory land, the glorious land, the promised land that is in heaven. Yeah, how good and how fair it shall be. That's the glorification. Grain shall make the young men flourish and new wine the maidens. And this is speaking of the third and fifth generations. Uh, the kings also, once again, in uh, the second um, generation, which was in the covenant of, uh, of Moses at the ends of the earth. There were, he had his people there too. And so, the grain, these are the grain offerings that God receives, the many cereal offerings of grain. And it's grain given to God. There will be no more meat offerings uh, as far as uh, slaughtering animals after the return of Christ. And you wine, the maidens. Amazing. Maidens refers to, once again, the church that magnify, multiply the glory of Almighty God. Zechariah chapter 9. I hope you're inspired. God bless you all abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit, to the glory of the Father. Amen and amen.